In this short video, I'm going to give you an overview of the route that arterial blood takes from the heart to the external head and neck, and then the route that the venous blood takes back to the heart from the external head and neck. So just as a quick review, we've previously talked about how the circulatory system has two circuits to it, a systemic circuit and a pulmonary circuit. And the systemic circuit consists of arteries and veins that travel to and from all parts of the body except for the lungs. So recall again that our pulmonary circuit starts here at the right side of the heart, leaves the heart, goes to both lungs and back, and then once it returns to the left atrium, we've officially entered the systemic circuit. And when we leave the heart through the aorta, then um, it's going to be heading out to the rest of the body and eventually return to the right atrium via the superior or inferior vena cava. So let's go ahead and start with that flow out of the heart right about here and see how it specifically is going to get to the head and the neck. So I've gone ahead and on the right side here, uh, just kind of outlined the general flow of the different named vessels. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, use this heart image here on the left to trace this entire process. So we're going to initially notice that coming out of the left ventricle, we're going to find the ascending aorta, which is going to then transition into the aortic arch. Now there are three arterial branches that will emerge from the aortic arch. The first of which is going to be the brachiocephalic trunk. This is the blood vessel that is ultimately going to be conducting blood flow to the right side of the head and neck and to the right upper limbs. The brachiocephalic trunk is then going to split into the right common carotid artery, which is going to head towards the head and the neck, and also the right subclavian artery, which is going to then continue on to the upper limbs. If we were to continue along that aortic arch, we're going to see the second branch that emerges from there, and that is going to be the left common carotid artery, which will head to the left side of the head and the neck. And then finally, we are going to see the third branch emerging from that, which is going to be the left subclavian artery heading towards the left upper limb. Let's go ahead now and just focus on this right side. So we've gone ahead and we've already left the aortic arch and headed into the brachiocephalic trunk. And let's continue going on to the uh, right side of the head and neck then. We noted already that the brachiocephalic trunk is going to split into the right common carotid and the right subclavian arteries. And now where are we going to go from there? The fact that this is called a common artery tells you that it is going to split into two arteries. In this case, there's going to be the internal carotid artery and then the external carotid artery. The internal carotid artery, as you can see here in light blue in the picture on the right, is then going to enter the skull through the carotid canal, which is um, a feature of the skull that you should know by now, and then ultimately go to the, uh, to the brain to supply the blood flow, especially to the uh, anterior part of the brain. The external carotid artery is going to stay on the external part of the skull and supply blood to the structures on the external side. If we were to continue on in that right subclavian artery, we are then going to see another artery emerge and head towards the head and neck, and that is the vertebral artery. We can see that vertebral artery here that is then going to travel through all of those transverse foramina in the cervical vertebrae and ultimately enter through the skull as well and also supply blood to the brain, um, focusing more on the posterior part of the brain there. So that's what's happening on the right side as we leave the aortic arch to the brachiocephalic trunk. What about getting to the left side of the head? So I've left the brachiocephalic trunk in here for reference, um, and we can see then, we, we've already talked about how the left common carotid artery comes off of the arch as well as the left subclavian, and the rest of the pattern is pretty much the same. So just as on the right side, the left is going to split into an internal and external carotid artery, and just as on the right side, the vertebral artery is going to come off of the subclavian, um, only in this case is coming off of the left subclavian. I want you to notice that the only blood vessels that need left and right tagged onto them are the subclavians because they originate from different locations. The left subclavian originates from the aortic arch, while that right subclavian is going to originate from the brachiocephalic trunk. And then also the common carotids because the left common carotid comes from the aortic arch, while the right common carotid comes from the brachiocephalic trunk. 
Once we get to the internals and externals, we don't need lefts and rights because in all cases they come from a common carotid artery. And likewise with the vertebral, we don't need lefts and rights because it doesn't matter which side of the body on we're on, they're going to come from the subcladians. So what about the venous return from the head? Um, the good part about following this route is, it is um, these routes are symmetrical from the left and the right side. So you do not need to specify and you should not specify left or right with any of these blood vessels. Just as we had subclavian arteries, we also had some clavian veins. But again, these don't need lefts and rights associated with them. And these are coming from the upper limbs. And then we're going to see the external jugular veins drain into the subclavian veins. However, note that the name does not change at this point. So the external jugular is draining into the subclavian vein, not merging with it. So the blood is going to continue as the subclavian vein, and then the subclavian vein is going to merge with the internal jugular vein to form the brachiocephalic veins. And finally, the two brachiocephalic veins are going to merge to form the superior vena cava. Something that you'll notice in this route compared to, or that's different in this route compared to the arterial flow, is that there is no common jugular vein. I'm going to say that again. There is no common jugular vein. There are also no jugular arteries, and there are no carotid veins. So just keep in mind that those terms are used differently between the arteries and the veins. I did want to point out these flows um, one more time, specifically on this chart from the lab, because sometimes people have difficulty finding these. So let's start with that venous flow. I'm going to keep this image here up on the left corner for reference here. So we can see initially that we have our subclavian vein that's coming along here, and we'll focus on the right side here for an uh, just as an example. Here we have that external jugular vein, and there can be a little bit of variation in the exact structure that this vein takes and the ex um, exact branching pattern that it has, but it's going to drain into that subclavian vein. And then we're going to have that internal jugular vein merge with the subclavian vein to form the brachiocephalic vein, and then ultimately that will drain into the superior vena cava. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add on the other side here and then just kind of fade this out so you can see a little bit better where that pattern is. So if you need to pause this video and go back and forth a little bit to confirm that you can find those vessels on this image, um, you can go ahead and do so. Okay, what about the arterial flow? Let's again start with the right side here. So I've got our right side written, but then I do also have the other two branches um, coming off here of the left common carotid and the left subclavian arteries, even though those two aren't labeled with text on this image. So again, let's go ahead and we're going to start with our aortic arch. You'll notice that this part of the heart, if you see all of these dashed lines here, that's implying they're behind something. They're either behind the sternum, as you can see right here, or in some cases even behind the brachiocephalic veins that um, you can see here in blue. So we kind of have to um, assume where some of these vessels are going to be but we're gonna see our brachiocephalic trunk come off of that aortic arch. And then this initial split is kind of happening behind this internal jugular vein. But we can kind of see approximately that route and that curvature of the right subclavian artery and then the right common carotid artery. Now, here's the part that kind of tricks people a little bit is seeing this split between the internal and the external carotid arteries because part of it is hidden behind this vein. And we're going to we're going to come back to that um, little bifurcation in a minute here. You will also notice that I have this um, in opposite order um, based on what you see in this sketch over here. And that's just because this this head is turned. But we can confirm that this pinkish one here is following indeed the external carotid because you can see how it stays external to the skull and then continues to branch. And then if we were to continue on in this right subclavian, right about here, we can see that vertebral artery coming off and you can even see it going through all of those different uh, transverse foramina. I'm gonna back that up one more time. Notice here how there's all the foramina there. So let's go ahead and put that back in there. So that's showing what's going on on this right route. Just as a comparison, we can add in this le these left vessels here, but you can't see any further where this uh, left common carotid artery goes. So again, kind of fading this out so you can see the approximate routes where those um, that those blood vessels are taking. All right, I mentioned that we were going to come back to this region. Um, I've outlined here with this dashed line the route that the 
uh, right common carotid artery is taking and then approximately where that split is. So I already mentioned that this was going to be the external carotid artery and that the internal was kind of hiding behind it. And you and you, so you can kind of see how in this part, you see how it takes like more of a purplish tint to it. And that's because this blue is that internal jugular vein and the internal carotid is kind of hiding behind that. Um, and then we can also see where that one would disappear here and that this would continue on as the external carotid. The other clue that this is where that bifurcation is occurring is this structure right here, which is the thyroid cartilage of the larynx. So this is the larynx, and if you can see, the top of that thyroid cartilage is considered to be the approximate location as to where that split is going to occur. So if you want to confirm which blood vessel you're looking at, first of all, find the thyroid cartilage. Are you inferior to that? Then you're probably looking at the common carotid. If you are superior to that, look to see is the blood vessel going to the external part of the skull or is it going to the internal? And in this case, if it's internal, we're not even going to be able to see it from this perspective.